I've been thinking about building a project like this for quite some time, all the way back to when I did Project Ultron, which some of you may remember, and that had similar intentions initially. What I've been wanting to try though is testing a proper machine learning AI to see if I could automatically control a prosthesis using body posture and the position of my other limbs as inputs. This is because getting repeatable data from a brain-computer interface is quite tricky, without embedding electrodes in your head at least, and although there are already electromyography solutions to read muscle and nerve signals such as the MyAware muscle sensors, it seems like machine learning could play a part. This project is highly experimental and this video is about the initial R&D. I'm intending to continue with the project along these lines after this video, and I'll talk some more about that at the end. There are several companies who've helped me with this project, they supply parts and assistance for free, but none of their appearances in this video are a paid advertisement. So in order to start the project, first of all I needed to make some sort of wearable motion capture suit so I can get all the data from my body motions into something to process it. Thanks to Core Components for providing the electronic components for this project. This includes several microcontrollers including a number of Teensy LCs, a Teensy 4.1 and the Adafruit MPU6050 inertial measurement units. I made these four 3D printed units, each one has a Teensy LC on Core Components Perma Proto board along with the MPU6050 attached to each one. I also used some AMS AS5047 magnetic encoders attached to each one, and these use a magnet rotating above the chip to do rotational position sensing. So we can now record the joint angle of a limb such as a knee or elbow, and we can also get the position of the upper limb using the inertial measurement unit. And of course we can get all three pieces of data at once, and use this for all of our limbs. And the data is sent over serial, and I'm just using the Arduino serial plotter there to visualise it. I also need to record my head motions, so I've got the inertial measurement unit, exactly the same as the others, but without the joint encoder, attached to a headset. All of that data gets sent to the Teensy 4.1, again mounted on Core Components Perma Proto, and each one of those plugs into a connector, so that I can plug in all of the four limbs and the head. And all of that makes a rudimentary motion capture suit which I can wear recording the motions from all of my four limbs, my arms, my legs, my joints of my limbs and the position of the limbs as well as my head position. All of the data I've got in the visualizer there is coming from the Teensy 4.1 where all the data is sent, at the moment I'm just outputting it to the serial terminal for debug. Now, those of you paying attention will realise there's some problems with this. Of course, I'm only recording two axes in my upper arm, which are this one and this one. And of course, we also have a third one, which is rotating the arm, which I'm not recording. So we've got quite limited data there. The other issue is, if I put my arm right out, then the inertial measurement unit axis in this direction can measure that with no problem. But the other axis that's trying to measure this gets really confused if I roll my arm a little bit and then flips over and goes all crazy because at that point it tips right up it doesn't really know what it's doing. So we've got some caveats there and some limited range of motion we can record. But now we need to get all of that data and decode it with an AI to work out what my right arm should be doing essentially when it's missing from the other body motions. So I sought help from OgmaCorp, which is a startup company that makes machine learning software. Their AOG Neo software is lightweight, so it can run on low power devices, and there's even a version that can run on a microcontroller. The software is open and available on GitHub, it's free for personal use, although commercial use requires a license. Ogma Corp have built their software on neuroscience, matching the power of state-of-the-art deep learning algorithms, but with a self-organising structure, flexibility and efficiency found in the human brain. Generally, AOGMA Neo is used for reinforcement learning. There are lots of demo videos in the OGMA Corp YouTube channel demonstrating emergent behaviour from robots using the software. This includes a robot dog learning to walk better, it's using an optical mouse style sensor for velocity feedback, and then learning which changes to the kinematics of the robot make it go faster. The other great demo is a pair of sumo bots which have their positions tracked using machine vision and an overhead camera. They get reinforcement feedback when various actions take place, such as the other robot leaving the ring. Initially the behaviour is random, but after several rounds of training they learn how to fight and tend to try to push the other robot out of the ring. So I added a Raspberry Pi Zero to my electronics. This will receive the data from the Teensy over serial, process it using AOGMA Neo and send it back to the Teensy again. 
So with quite a bit of help from Ogmacorp, we fed the data from all of my limbs and head motions into an Aogma Neo hierarchy. I tried training the model by doing some fairly distinctive repeated motions, but I also spent some time during the training standing still, because we also need to train the model to understand what to do in that case. The waveform you can see is from my right arm only. The green line at the top is my right elbow joint, the red and blue lines are the two IMU axes in my right arm. After doing a short piece of training, I switched the system over into playback mode. This should now allow Aogman Neo to predict what my right arm should be doing, even though I'm now no longer moving my right arm. It can predict this based on my other body motions through the training I did. And you can see that we get a very similar output to the real motions of my right arm, even though my right arm is no longer moving. The data is quite blocky looking though, and that's because we're only running at about 10 hertz. That was about the throughput limit for the Raspberry Pi Zero running Aogman Neo, but we essentially get data that looks okay, and we can smooth the data out later with some post-processing. You'll also notice a few random spikes here and there, but we'll filter these out later too. If I stop moving, then the predicted right arm data should settle at a rest position, just as we trained it, and if I start the motions again, then off it goes. The next stage of course is to build an actual robot arm I can wear on a backpack and see if the output motions actually match what my right arm should be doing. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and all my other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. And also thanks to Robotis for the Dynamics or servos that I'm using in this project. I've got three XM540 W270T servos and I've also got the MKR shield for Arduino which runs at 33 volts. The servos can all be attached together on one serial bus, but first of all we need to power them up, attach the USB serial interface, and I'm using R Plus Manager here to go and address them all uniquely. We can alter various parameters in the servo, but the main one I'm interested in is giving them a unique address so that we can address them all individually and give them all individual motions. Once that's done, it's very easy to control them with the Arduino code and there are examples provided with the library. We can give them the direct angle we want to turn them to in degrees as well as the velocity and this is very useful because the inertial measurement units already output their data in degrees. We can also read various data back from the servo including the actual position it's at and also the current consumption. Here my green line is where the servo is moving and my yellow line is the current and you can see as I load the servo the current increases and that's very useful for robotics to detect collisions and detect loading. I fitted the servos into both the elbow and one of the shoulder axis for the robot arm. That looks pretty good, but we need something comfortable to mount the arm on. I found this frame rucksack on Amazon and I've made an extra brace on the back with some 2020 extrusion so we can fit the other arm axis and it's really comfortable to wear and easy to support. We need one additional axis and that's going to slot onto the 2020 and that will be the axis that lifts outwards. So with some more 2020 to hold the other two arm axis, and some 3D printed pieces that fit into the bearings, we're almost ready to go. So now we have the same mechanical axes to output the data to as we're recording with the two IMU axes and the elbow encoder. The Dynamics or servos I have are really strong, so I've just put these straight on the hubs for the joints, and you can see that servo is more than capable of lifting that arm out, and I'm just controlling this manually for now with an analog pot attached to the Arduino and mapping those positions to the servo. But that seems to be absolutely no problem at all and the servo is more than powerful enough. I thought I should add a hand so it doesn't look too weird and the arm doesn't look too short, so I've just made a static hand which doesn't have any motors in. 
That makes the armor more natural length, and we can see there's still absolutely no problem with that one Dynamixel servo lifting the whole load of the arm out at quite a good velocity. So I thought I should do a quick mapping test just to check all of those angles look okay. We're actually running Aogma Neo in training mode here, so there is some lag from the training happening, and of course that's only running at 10 hertz. I've put quite heavy motion filtering on though, so we can see we get nice smooth lines now and the arm's not too jerky. We may also need some additional motion filtering when we put Aogma Neo into playback mode to get rid of any spikes and anomalies in the data, but it looks pretty good for now. I have set up some constraints on the arm as well so I can't hit myself with the arm and I can't blast past all the end stops and pull all of the wires out. I mounted the electronics on the backpack including a Teensy with the Arduino MKR shield and also an emergency stop that cuts power to the Dynamixels that I can reach with my left arm. So now let's do some training and see what the output from the arm actually is and if it matches my right arm motions without the sensor on my right arm present. So I went through some quite distinctive poses, again with standing still in the middle, and what you see in this clip is the only training I actually did from fresh. So only a few repetitions, around 30 in total, over probably only a couple of minutes training. So now let's put the arm on, now you can see the sensors are missing from my right arm and just not connected to the electronics. And apart from a small amount of unexpected emergent behaviour, the arm actually does what it's supposed to do. Now you've already seen that Aogma Neo is quite a lot more responsive than this, but I have got very heavy filtering on. And that's why there's a slight lag and a delay and the arm moves very slowly. But it does actually move into the correct position, provided I strike the right pose that I did in the training. And we should be seeing it raising, so I'm doing opposite limbs with my opposite right and left leg. It's actually quite difficult to strike the same pose without using my right arm and get it exactly the same as it was in the training, but nonetheless it's quite weird seeing the fake right arm raise up when it should. I want it to be more responsive than that though, so I've turned down some of that filtering, and now we can see that the arm actually moves a lot quicker. So that feels like it's a bit more natural although I still need the heavy filtering to get rid of some of the spikes in the output data from Aogma Neo. I thought I'd try and train it for something useful next, so I did some training posturing as if I was going to pick something up. And again, I only did a short amount of training, probably only 30 to 40 repetitions over a couple of minutes. This one doesn't work quite as well in playback. It does the best it can, but of course we've got that missing axis in rotation of the arm, which I'm not recording, and the arm isn't capable of moving there. So it's actually pretty tricky for the arm to posture by moving across to the left of my body in the same way I did in the training. But the concept won't be much good unless it can remember different sets of outputs based on different sets of inputs. So this time I'm training from scratch again, and I'm doing two different body postures which have distinctly different right arm outputs, and distinctly different body motion inputs. One of those is just making a star shape as you can see here, and the other one is the previous pose raising my alternate left and right limbs. And I did quite a few more repetitions of this over only a few minutes though. Now it's important to remember what I said some of the problems were with my inertial measurement units and how they're mounted on my arms when I move my arms out. So here we are in playback mode, again with the sensor removed from my right arm and my right arm not moving. And we can see initially that the arm seems to copy the correct motions that I did in training. So here we've got the opposite limbs, and that seems to work pretty well as it did before and the arm's quite responsive. Let's try that star motion again, but we can see something very strange is happening. But eventually it gets it. But if you look at the IMU on my left arm, you'll see it's not quite level. Let's try that again. Yep, it's all in that left arm IMU to make it the same as it was, of course, in the training. And that's one of the issues I've got with the data that I'm collecting, which of course will affect the training for Aogma Neo. 
So this has of course been a really rudimentary start into what is probably an overambitious project. I'm pretty impressed with the motions and the data we get out though, considering the data that's going in. These things don't make the best motion capture suits as I've described. It's really highly subjective depending on how they're mounted on me and how I pose with them. So it's pretty good we've managed to get some repeatability there. Of course that data impacts the training as well as the playback. So it's pretty good that the arm does what it's supposed to do, even if I have to reposture one of my arms slightly, and we can see what the reasons are. I think I'd like to simplify this for the next stage though, probably to just a right arm, forearm prosthetic with a hand that can do different postures and then use more distinctive, better quality data going in, maybe not just from postures, but from EMG data and other sources and see what we can get out of that. So thanks again to all the sponsors, that's Cool Components for the electronic components, 3D Fuel for the filament, Robotis for the servos, and of course OgmaCorp for Aogma Neo, the software that drives the whole thing, which I'll be using again in the future. If you'd like to subscribe on Patreon or for a YouTube channel membership, those links are in the description below, and YouTube channel members and patrons get access to all the videos up to a week early, as well as sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up so you can be part of all that discussion. Alright, that's all for now.